Okay, okay. Welcome back to another episode of A Dose of Reality. How are we feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling. You feeling good? I'm. I'm doing pretty well. They got me on a late shoot again now. Who's this day? Well, really, you. No, so it's me. And there's, you know, Ray is in the building also. Yeah, Ray is. Ray is. Yeah, here. I'm here. Blame him. <laughs> I'm not a part of that. Yeah. Everybody knows Ray thrives in the nighttime, right? So absolutely, he does. This I is do. his peak. I do not. We're opposites in that way. I understand. <laughs> but you're here anyway. I'm here because this is what we do. We move. Your love for your people. Yeah, that, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. That but wild. for the people, for you all, we got some info. We got to get into what's going on in the world because mm. there's a whole lot. It would seem we're on the precipice of a world war. It would seem that way. It often seems that way, doesn't it? Mm. We're seeing a lot of conflicts across the world. Obviously, war takes time, but we can point to a lot of things. Obviously, the latest thing we've seen is a conflict between Iran and Israel. Mm -hmm. So Iran would have been responding to a attack on their consulate in Syria, mm -hmm. which they attributed to the Israelis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Israelis. And they launched some missiles and some drones. They literally announced it, like, yeah. They did. They were on their way, so <laughs> you all will see. <laughs> yes, they did, they did announce it. <laughs> I believe most of them were shot down. Mm. Then Israel was like, well, we gotta respond back. Mm -hmm. And did they, they launched an attack? Yeah, yeah, as far as, I, they no, they, there was a missile attack on Iran, but Iran tried to kind of play it down as though it didn't affect them too much, if that makes sense, and mm -hmm. so, it died down a little bit after that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, because I guess right now we're just watching, are Israel going to attack further? Are, are, are Iran going to respond even more? We don't know. But it did die down a little bit after that missile attack. Yeah. yeah so we just have to keep an eye on that. But if it does escalate further, other parties may have to get involved. Yeah. That would be interesting, won't it? Will be interesting. Mm. But I want to bring more of a focus to Israel because... As we know, the biggest thing going on with Israel would be what's the conflict between Israel and Palestine, mm, mm. which Israel would say what they're doing to Palestine is a response to an attack on October 7th by Hamas, October 7th last year, as we know. And yeah, we've been seeing what's been happening ever since. Mm. It's crazy. But we have been talking about that we're going to go into the history of that because it stems way further back than October 7th mm. for all who have researched. So let's get into that. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely get into that. It's, it's very true. It goes it goes back. And we did say we were going to go into it, didn't we? A while ago. It's like, yeah, don't worry, we'll go into the, <laughs> the whole history there. But, you know, we've been, we've been focused on more important things like Africa, right? So we yes. got gotta keep our first and foremost priorities in check if that makes sense but israel and palestine palestine the conflict there is important as well in terms of the context of what's going on on the planet it's a conflict that you can kind of trace back to one point and then trace it back to a point before that and then trace it back to a point before that so in that sense it's hard to sort of isolate an origin moment for this particular conflict mm -hmm. um it's often it's a conflict you can kind of split into two contexts right you have the practical sense where you, in terms of land and resources where you have a group of people in this case the jews who will say we've been mistreated by the european christians here for this period of time we've been mistreated by the german nazis here for this period of time and so you have the issue of where you place that group of people who want a state of their own if that makes sense and then you have the more religious context to the conflict where the jews based on their religious beliefs and texts and so on and so forth believe themselves the chosen and believe that that land is for them that they have religious and ancestral rights to that land and that land belongs to them and so you go back and you do a little bit of investigation into you know the jewish religion and you see that yeah this is what they believe they believe that that land literally was given to them by god if that makes sense and so and then the arab people will believe no that that's their land and so you often have these religious conflicts religion is often a cornerstone of conflict, war, evil acts, genocide sometimes, right? Much violence. Much violence is committed in the name of religion. And so, and that's just it. And often you have one group over here saying, we're the chosen people. Our God is the best. Our way is the right way. We're right. 
And another group of people saying, no, hang on, we're the chosen people. It says right here in our text, our God is the best. Our way is the right way. And obviously those people clash and so on and so forth. So plenty of wars in, in the name of something that apparently purports peace. Mm -hmm. What they would certainly claim, this is all about peace. But we see wars in its name. That's just the nature of, maybe that's just human nature, if that makes sense. But so they believe they have religious rights to that land. Zionism is the, literally one of the fundamental principles of Zionism is that we, is that the Jews establish a state of Israel in Palestine. Okay. Zionism, you can trace back to the late 1800s, 1895. You can kind of trace back the origins of that particular movement. So you have that context of it. You have the religious context of it, which is very important. And maybe we'll, we'll go into a little bit more because Baba Yanun has spoken upon the religious context of it and mm -hmm. their mindset and uh, their mindset and why they're doing the things that they do in that sense. So that drives a lot of their actions. The conflict in its current state, most people would trace back to 1917. Okay. So what happened in 1917? You had the Balfour Declaration, right? It's interesting. Always look at the dates of these particular things. We got we got our war expert in here, Ray Benu. Mm -hmm. So World War One, it started and finished in nineteen fourteen to nineteen eighteen. There you go, and that was between the uh, Allies and the Central Forces. The Central Forces. Yeah. The Allies being, you know, uh, Great Britain, France, Russia. Mm. Central Forces being Germany and at the time the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Mm. There you go. Okay. So always important to look at what's going on in that period of time. So you had the war between 1914 and 1918. 1917, you have the Balfour Declaration. So in 1917, the British defeated the Ottoman Empire, the Turkish Ottoman Empire. Before 1917, the Ottoman Empire had control of the Palestinian region. Okay. Mm -hmm. British defeat them. They take control of the region. Okay. So the Balfour Declaration is named as such because you literally had a man by the, with the surname of Balfour who was the British foreign secretary at the time, he wrote a letter to the leader of the Jewish community, surnamed Rothschild. He wrote a letter to him saying, yeah, you supporting, you know, their claim to make a home for themselves in Palestine, basically. That's how you could sum up that letter, supporting the Jews' right to make a home for themselves in Palestine. So that's 1917. On to 1920, the League of Nations, which is a group of, uh, of countries or nations, established especially post World War One, they basically give a mandate to Britain. They say, okay, Palestine's under your control, Britain. Your job is to facilitate the establishment of the Jewish home in Palestine, right? That's Britain's job. So Britain rules over this area and their job, as stated by the League of Nations, is to allow, it will facilitate, aid um, the Jews in establishing their nation, if that makes sense, or their state, mm -hmm. so to speak. So of course, the moment that that, declaration is made, Balfour Declaration, and in the years onwards, the the, the, the uh, Jewish immigration into Palestine begins, right? I say begins, you know, suddenly you have a, a large number of European Jews immigrating into Palestine, right? The moment that starts, the Arab people that are already there on the land are like, but this is a direct and direct conflict with our rights and our autonomy. This, this is a threat to our land or to our nation if that makes sense the jewish people who remember believe anyway that this land is theirs they're moving in like yeah we got a right to buy up this we got to establish our businesses here establish our community there if that makes sense so between 1917 and 1933 you have jews immigrating every year to palestine but it's at what you might describe a reasonable rate okay 1933 comes who come who arrives to power in 1933 Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Hitler, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Hitler comes to power. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hitler comes to power. I think he's, he's, it's that year which he's uh, announced as the Chancellor of Germany, right? So he comes to power. Mind you, as Sabians, we always give you the story that you see and the story behind the story. So the important thing to note about Hitler, he comes to power in 1933. What we do know, and if you go back and watch our Hitler episode and you watch Rep 2 break it down, eloquently what we do know is that it's if you go back to 1913 that's when he's established as the human contactee for the extraterrestrials from Aldebaran right right so if you tell that story briefly 
1950, stay with me because I'm jumping years. I'm talking to the to the audience. I know you guys <laughs> right there with me. I'm with you. I'm yeah. fully with you. I understand. Okay? I'm half in the spiritual because it's late. But <laughs> yeah, you got to stay, stay I'm, with I'm, us. I'm with you. <laughs> stay with us. Drink some water. Stay here. Okay, 1950, right? Remember we spoke about 1950. I think Retu spoke about it as well. We would have spoken about it in our very first episode of A Dose of Reality, Aliens, right? 1950. There is an alien craft sighted over the White House, right? Baba Yanun broke down that that particular craft was a craft that belonged to the Elder Barons, okay? A group of extraterrestrials who, who have relation to the Pleiadians. So they appear um, blonde, blonde haired, blue eyed. Sometimes we say blonde furred, but blonde haired because it goes straight down. It's not really hair, hair grows up, okay? Only Negroids really have that. Blonde, blonde furred, blue eyed extraterrestrials, right? Okay? They have their meeting in 1950. They go and have their meeting with government officials. They don't like that meeting. They don't like how it went. So they go back in time further to 1913. Watch the Hitler episode if you want mm -hmm. further details on that. So they go back and they establish their, their, they're trying to push forward their agendas. And at that point, Hitler is chosen as the contactee. Interestingly enough, a year later, World War I begins, interestingly enough. But Hitler isn't in power at that point. I think he's a soldier at that point. Okay. So always know the story behind the story if that makes sense so you have 1933 right hitler comes to power obviously given the appearance remember the appearance of the extraterrestrials that he's in contact with blonde haired and blue eyed so he thinks this is the image these extraterrestrials are advanced beyond human technology and perform things that some certainly at that time depending on your development as, as a species might look at as godly or advanced certainly yeah. so hitler thinks these beings are god which is part of the reason that he treats the jews or treated the jews the way he did okay it's also part of the reason that he practiced eugenics whereby he's trying to through selective breeding recreate this image of what he believes to be god based on the extraterrestrials that he's in contact with so 1933 comes the rules and laws or the Nazi rules and laws, should we say, are unkind to the Jews. So as you can imagine, immigration of the European Jews into Palestine increases dramatically. Because mm -hmm. now they're like, we really got to get out of Europe. We, we got to go. We, and obviously because of the Balfour Declaration, only logical that that's where they do go. So whereas between 1917 and 1933, immigration was steady but it would have never have exceeded more. I think it exceeded 14,000 per year once in those years, in that time period. In 1935, in that year alone, there were 60,000 Jews who immigrated into Palestine. Into Palestine. Mm -hmm. So obviously the Arab people are looking at, looking at it, they're doing the maths and they're saying, nah, if this continues at the rate that it's going, the Jews will be the majority and us the minority in within the decade okay we'll be marginalized we can't have this okay so a year later 1936 you have the arab rebellion do some research into that the arabs rebel they kill british british officials and uh, jewish civilians okay remember this land is still in the control of the british so there's british officials about that yeah yeah but kings of the planet you know how the yeah. british yeah so, <laughs> so they're still around. <laughs> Say that again. They're British all up everywhere. Yeah, the colonial era, just a, a, a time mm -hmm. was it, wasn't it? You got, you got to follow all that and see that they were trying to do everything. And it's like, relax, Britain. But anyway, so Britain are in control of the area. The Arabs rebel. They kill British, British officials and Jewish civilians. Mm -hmm. The British respond and deal with the rebellion. Okay, but come 1939 now. In response to that rebellion and Arab unrest and what Arabs feel is injustice, so on and so forth, the British released the White Paper, what's known as the White Paper. So it's basically a rule on policy. And within the White Paper, what they say is, in the White Papers, they say, in the next five years, immigration of Jews into Palestine cannot exceed 75,000 in the next five years. And after that, any immigration should be with Arab consent. Okay? So... Again, look at the time period. When did World War II start? 1939. 1939, right? So the white papers was really, remember, Germany are moving mad again. They've moved mad 
in the first world war world war Two, they're moving mad so the british are looking at it like we're gonna we're probably gonna need to fight the germans soon okay so in releasing the white papers they're trying to establish arab um support like if we gotta fight the germans you're gonna help us are, are you arabs gonna help us that's why they released one of the reasons they released the white papers mm -hmm. but they said okay will control immigration. It can't exceed this number for the next five years. And also after that, everything has to be with your consent. The Arabs look at those white papers as, as, oh, okay. That's kind of just the beginning of you putting right the injustice of the Balfour Declaration back in 1917. The Jews look at it like, this is a betrayal of the Balfour Declaration. This, this ain't right. This can't run. So nobody's really happy, <laughs> if that makes sense. This They're, is messy, man. It is very <laughs> messy. That's why I'm saying you do research into the story. There's so many layers to it and, and so on and so forth. So the British are trying to tread anyway because they're like, oh, listen, we've got the conflict with Germany coming up soon. We need to do what we need to do. Anyway, I think months after that is when the war started. You mentioned it was the same year. And interestingly enough, the Jews enlisted to help with the war. Yeah. Right? To, to have, they fought alongside the British against the Germans, but the Jews would, right? Wouldn't you? Because it's against Germany, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So come 1945, when the, when the war ends, the Jews are looking at it like, you need to revolt these white papers because we helped you. We just helped y'all out. We just helped y'all out with the war. So you need to revoke it, right? Okay. We were alongside each other, revoke the white papers. The Arabs are like, no, don't you dare. We're, we're, we're unhappy enough as it is. But... What you have is that come up to 1947, I believe it is, 1947, what they try and do is establish some sort of partition in, in the Palestinian land. They're like, uh, you, Arabs, you have that part. Jews, you have that part. Hey, guys, I think the Jewish accepted it. They must have suited their uh, needs, but the Arabs did not. And 1948 is when the Jews, and, and this is just before British mandate, is about to end or British rule over the area is supposed to end legally. Just before that, the Jews declared their own independent state of Israel. Okay. And so that's how you see Israel born leading up to the form that you see it is right now, mm -hmm. the state of Israel. So they declared their state. They said, listen, we're an independent state. I think at that time you probably had about 650,000 Jews in Palestine and they declared their state. Um, the Arab, some of the Arab nations said, no, no way. You ain't declaring no independent state here on this land. They went to war. Uh, they tried to war with Israel. A few of the Arab states, you had the Palestinians, you might have had Egypt, perhaps Syria, look into that, maybe a couple of others. But they lost that battle. They lost that battle. And so Israel was like, yeah, we won the battle. This is our land. This is our state. And so what you had in the, in the years and decades following was Israel begin to start creating settlements within, because you still had the Arabs around, the Palestinians around, they started creating settlements, and I'm, I'm fast tracking through some of the story, started creating settlements, which ag ag settlements are against international law, by the way, or these settlements were against international law. Started creating their settlements like, yeah, we're, we're gonna occupy here. There's people there already, but they're like, no, we're here now, we're here now, so on and so forth. And you had certain wars break out in the 60s, late 60s, you had another war break out between them. And so every so often, if you go through the history, you see every so often Israel are establishing a new settlement somewhere within that land and saying, this belongs to us now. Establishing a new settlement, maybe five, 10 years later and saying, this belongs to us now, if that makes sense. A lot of these settlements are condemned internationally, but nothing's really done, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Leading up to, I think the eighties, late eighties is when Hamas came to be. And basically you have a, a, a revolution, so to speak, or a revolt of the Arabs in that land saying, no, we can't stand for this anymore. This is our land. We're gonna, we're gonna try and take it back. And hence Hamas is born. You have battles between Hamas and Israel, constantly little battles where has Hamas are attacking Israel, trying to find them. I think you get to the point where Hamas is maybe 30,000 soldiers at some point, leading all the way up to, and you have various things happening in and out of that, leading all the way up to, obviously, um, before you even get to, Last year, October 7th, if you, rem if you recall, a few years ago, I think it was 2020, Trump tried to um, <laughs> tried to uh, initiate peace in the region. And he came with a proposal of how um, things should be sectioned off and how it can be fair and fair, I put in quotations. Remember, the US supports Israel. What Baba Yanun has told us is that Trump has been had been tasked with building the Temple of Nana 
Okay, so there's extra so you tell the story on two levels if that makes sense you have the human level and you have the extraterrestrial level but extraterrestrial have extraterrestrials have interest in that land if that makes sense which is why it fuels this religious belief remember when we talk about religion what most people think is a way to connect with god is in fact a, a way that has been pushed upon them by certain extraterrestrial beings so god as we keep saying are extraterrestrials mm -hmm. okay and so uh back in that time period baba yanun had told us okay now trump's been tasked with building the temple of nana okay nana is whose son Enlil's son mm -hmm. so when you deal with the bible as we mentioned i think last week or the week before last week was it last week the gods of the bible are the anunnaki and the two main voices or two of the main voices that you hear in the bible are those two sons of anu enki and Enlil. Enlil. Enlil's son is Nana. So a lot of what you see going on in, in a religious context is actually Nana, that particular being. When you talk about the God of light and fire, when mm -hmm. you're talking about God appearing to so-and-so as a bush of fire and so-and-so, that light, that is representative of Nana and his being, if that makes sense, whose symbol is Venus in the sky. Hence we say, watch the skies, but not to go off too, too off track, if that makes sense. But yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's all led up. Trump tried to create some peace. But really, it was leaned towards Israel, and so well, Israel I, gradually boxed the Palestinians yes, in yes. on the, the the land, haven't yeah. they? <laughs> They've taken more and more of the land to the point where you have the Gaza Strip, and you have a only a small amount of land that the Palestinian people actually occupy, and they've been forced into this particular area, and with very little, with what some might say are poor conditions, with little access to what some might cite as normal freedoms for a nation, all of their day-to-day -day life is, was effectively controlled by Israel, if that makes sense. And the international world knew it. Mm -hmm. They knew it. Um, it's just what you're going to do about it, if you're going to do anything. And does it suit your agenda to have Israel in control? So the US supports Israel. So Trump came at that time, 2020, I think it was, to try and propose this, but a lot of the proposals suited Israel. So the Arab people were like, nah. So that peace proposal died, if that makes sense. And, um, and yeah, you had a situation on 2023 where October 7th, where Hamas launched an attack and said, yeah, we're trying to take back. And since then, we've seen Israel's response to said attack. So the history is deep and it goes back a while. I've told it kind of since 1917. But like I said, you can go back beyond that if you want to. And even the story between 1917 and now, there's a lot more that happened. A lot more clashes, a lot more battles, a lot more wars, a lot more international involvement coming and saying oh yeah you guys behave not really helping so on and so forth um but that's somewhat of the story of how, of how it came to be how it is now so when you deal with october 7th you're really dealing with just another step of that conflict not the origin point of that conflict but now to get onto what baba Yanun, baba Yanun has explained is that israel anyway because they see that as their holy land and because of the time period we are in, and they released an update on this, because of the time period that we're in, they believe their Messiah is to return. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to take back their holy land and make sure they control all the land so that they can build their temple in the right place as far as their beliefs. So a lot of what fuels this, if not all of what fuels this, is religion in some sense. And it's their beliefs and what they do. And so we have to try and look at what takes place and use our nine mind and sort of trying to establish in our own heads, well, what's motivating this, okay? So Israel will say, we're trying to exterminate Hamas. Hamas will say, we're trying to do this, exterminate Israel, whatever it is. But when you look at it from a religious context, that adds an extra layer. And Baba Yenon explained a while ago, they're gonna try and build their temple, uh, the temple of Nana. They think their Messiah's returning. And so there's religious context. One thing you have to remember about the Jews and the Jewish, Jew is not a race. It's not a race. It's a religion. Mm -hmm. And so when one person claims it as their ancestral heritage, you have to take that, you have to take that thought into context. You have to really think about that. Jew isn't a religion. Isn't it a race? It isn't a race. Sorry. It's a religion. Mm -hmm. And so what what anyone can claim <laughs> to be a Jew, right? Anyone can say, yeah, I'm Jewish. Yeah. That's the religion I practice. Okay, so what are Jews? And so Baba Yanun explained long ago, this is a lot of the confusion that you see with their terms and their terminology, but this war, he predicted it 
ages ago. You go back to Partharak chapter 9, I think, chapter 9 or 10. He explained that the Arabs were going to rise up against against the Caucasians, so to speak. And so this war was predicted even away, even back then. And then he's released various updates explaining that, yeah, yeah, they're going to they're gonna continue to battle. They're going to continue to war, but that war has nothing really to do with us. And they're confused anyway, because Jew is not a race. It's a religion. And so when someone claims herself as a Jew and says, that's my race, that is incorrect. And so that's, that's why you see, and you see it. You've seen different people claim that they're Jews at different points in time. We had a, a situation... Um, so last year or the year before where where the basketball player Kyrie Irving mm -hmm. was like, yeah, Jews are black, so on and so forth, which is a, another story in itself because really what we're, we're doing when we do that is we're, we're saying that, yeah, we were originally here first. And so a lot, all of the religions can be traced back to us in some way. I always say go back before any of these religions because we existed before and we had our spiritual ways before that. But anyone can, I can wake up tomorrow and say, you know what? I'm Jewish. Yeah. Do I get to go to Palestine? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, um, it's an interesting one, but that might, just a little summary of the story, I think, which might help. Um, yeah, I think yeah. it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was very well summed up. I, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Cause you know, I, I realized it was, um, it's late for me too. And you know, <laughs> trying to, I'm trying to stay out here. I was roasting you at the beginning, but. Trying to stay out here. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're you'll see, you'll see. Mm. But it's an interesting one. I kind of want to segue into discussing other things mm. that may attribute to World War Three. So let's look at it. Mm. Interesting. We're talking about I I ran as well because on Africa and the Rise Part Two we would have been speaking about Niger mm. and then telling the US to bounce. So we went into the, all of that and how the US officials just showed up in this year unannounced and it essentially offended them. So they were like, no, mm. you've really got to bounce now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so within those meetings, they would have uh, warned Niger about partnering with Russia, but also accused them of possibly making deals with Iran. Mm -hmm. which hasn't been confirmed yet but it's interesting there's development on that that there is a possibility of a deal with iran so niger would be selling iran um uranium mm. interesting. so that ties in doesn't it, does. it? <laughs> it does tie in because it it's like in. what you're about to do with that uranium should it reach your hands <laughs> yeah they're, they're, about, they're about to take video again <laughs> of their launch, of their attack on Israel. I don't know if that's the best way. I'm no war expert. You guys tell me what you think. I don't know if you're trying to win a war if you if you announce that you're, you're launching missiles like that, video <laughs> record them. It's coming. I don't know, because war be, war's an interesting one. War is when an you look at the one. past ones, they'd be like, okay, we're on our way. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, it's, I guess it, it's all, it takes so long. Yeah, yeah. I guess you also have um, international law as well. And mm -hmm. What you're allowed to do when civilians are present because you remember when israel attacked palestine they had to send warn legally you have to send warning to the civilians like yo whether how much better that makes it but yo you guys better get out of there because we're coming to attack and then the palestinians are, are are leaving but they're displaced okay same way at the end when in 1948 when israel established their state there were obviously many palestinians that were displaced as a result of that so, mm -hmm. and so, and so you do have international law to follow. It just to me, when I was watching Iran video record the, the missiles launching, I was like, oh, okay, well, Israel know it's, they know what's, what to do now. It's, it's not an attack that has any hope of success. But yeah, that'd be how it is. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's interesting. We're seeing, um, well, we, we're seeing development with Russia making their moves, China. Mm. So I wanted to get more into that. So obviously we spoke on how the bear and the dragon mm. will take down the eagle. Mm -hmm. Baba's spoken on that. So just signs we can look to towards that. Um, I mentioned we haven't spoken much on China. Mm. So um, Baba's obviously told us they're going to take Taiwan. So... Could you expand a bit more on that, like strategically? Yeah, I mean, when you're, when? when you're dealing with uh, China and Taiwan, you're dealing with the placement of where Taiwan is. So there's a long history there of civil wars within China. And at some point in time, you had 
a civil war and one group obviously would have lost and would have seeked refuge in Taiwan and eventually established their own or, or claim that now this is our own nation. We're separate to the main China. Mm -hmm. They've got their own officials. They've got their own army. They've got their own laws and so on and so forth. And so they've established themselves as separate to China. There came a time where US would have spot, obviously spotted that and said, you know what? Yeah, we're going to send support for Taiwan. It's a strategic move. If you look at where Taiwan is placed, it's, it's strategic in the sense of both trade and placement in terms of battles and wars and so on and so forth. Taiwan is obviously... Um, very close to a lot of US allies in the region. You look at places like Japan, you look at places like Philippines. So if the US control or have close uh, cooperation with Taiwan, that is a strategic advantage for them on China. If China take back Taiwan, they the US lose that strategic advantage. And then they also have the situation where China, if you look at the map of where Taiwan is, China are now very close geographically to what you would term as US allies, like Japan, if that makes sense. So that's why US are like, we can't lose that really. And China like, mm, we're gonna take that. Once China take Taiwan, they're ready and as we know, to attack, um, to attack the US. Baba Yanun mentioned uh, a couple of times, the war is gonna happen on US soil. So once China take Taiwan, we've already seen Russia move in to take Ukraine. They're ready in themselves to establish, them, to establish themselves as the dominant world forces if you like and so they're preparing for that strike on the u.s and and robert's like yeah it's not it's not going to be good what happens to the u.s we're seeing the end of their time the end of their rule mm -hmm. if that makes sense um but yeah that's why taiwan matters so much to the u.s you mentioned as well that they recently sent they recently got what set up an aid package for yeah so i was about to get into that headline mm. <laughs> so let's just look mm -hmm. at the headline okay so i have the headline here i actually wanted to get into it and read some reactions that I saw in the comments because mm. it was interesting to me just to gauge how the American people are feeling about the decisions the country is making. Right. right. But the headline is US House approves $60.8 billion in aid for Ukraine, $26.4 billion for Israel and $8 billion for Taiwan. Mm. That's a lot of dollars. That's a lot of dollars. That's a lot of money, man. So it reads, on April 19th, the US House of Representatives passed a bill giving Israel $26 billion in emergency aid. If it passes in the Senate, US President Joe Biden, who has promoted the bill since October, is likely to sign off on a $95 billion military aid package to Israel, Taiwan and Ukraine. Mm. interesting very interesting mm. so before we get into why this may be let's re read some reactions mm. from the american people someone quoted a uh, tupac they have money for war but they can't feed the poor yeah very true very true someone else said but can't find the money to pay black people reparations <laughs> <laughs> no very true again very true um, another comment was, but we only need 5 billion to end homelessness in America. Why not free healthcare, free medical, dental, and vision? Mm -hmm. USA doing everything but taking care of USA. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, I'm not paying my 8K in student loans since y'all got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's facts. That's, that's fair. facts right there. Mm. Last one. It's pertinent. What about Haiti, Congo, Sudan, and South Sudan? Yeah, yeah, that's pertinent because it shows you what matters to them. And what matters to them is their agendas, mm -hmm. okay? They don't particularly care about anyone else, although you can clearly establish um, that they, they care about Africans or people of African descent the least, if you look at their behavior over recent decades and century or whatever. But really all they care about is themselves and establishing and... and fueling their agendas and so they send an aid to these places because it helps their agenda and if they lose these places ukraine taiwan so on and so forth israel they obviously we know israel they're like that they're mm -hmm. in the west um they lose uh, they lose um their agendas suffer their agendas suffer and so that's why they're doing it because people obviously the americans would look at it and if you're uninformed you would look at it like well what what is taiwan 
what, what's, yeah, that, what's got, that got to what's do, that got with? do with us? It's right there with with China. It's right. Now, it's, why are we getting involved? And as I explained, it's all about uh, agenda and strategy and trade as well. There's a lot of trade that takes place in Taiwan that the unit the, the US benefits off. Mm-hmm. And so, and then again, you look at the placement. You're like, okay, yeah. If, if China take Taiwan, it's a it's a strategic move. And once they have Taiwan, their attack becomes, or or their defense or attack, their military military strategy becomes easier. And the U.S. are looking at it like, ah, oh, we we can't really have that. But they're struggling. If you look at the U.S. right now, they're struggling. They're they're too many things for them to do. They got to plug this hole over there, plug that hole over there. They're getting kicked out of Nigeria over there. Um, they got to help Israel over there. That's why an important point to make again about the Israel Iran conflict the US helped the US and the UK helped shoot down those missiles that Iran sent to Israel yeah. but the US specifically said after that if you attack Iran we won't help with that we won't help with that because the US are looking at like we're stretched too thin we can't do this and do that and do this and do that and do that over there <laughs> it's just too much and so you have that situation but yeah the US they care about their agenda. So when I say care about themselves, they care about their power. As one of the comments indicates, it's not that they care about their people necessarily. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But they care about their power. And so every move they make is to try and either keep that power or take more power. That's the, that's how they move. And that's how they do what they do. And it's a nature that they got from their overseers. Mm-hmm. So that's going to continue. And they don't matter how much homelessness costs to solve or or free health credit they ain't interested they in that they couldn't care less they don't give it that. watch fall of the west though it's mm. gonna break down where that's all heading mm-hmm. what they say babylon is falling yeah babylon is falling babylon is falling it's an important prophecy that baba yunun made when he explained that the bear and the dragon will will turn and strike down the eagle because that's literally what we're seeing the bear russia and the dragon china are preparing to strike down the eagle and it's going to happen. It, a lot, these prophecies are unavoidable. You you wait and, and watch to see how they manifest, but they're unavoidable. This time period w- is coming to an end. These are just facts. So when you talk about is the war coming? Yes, it's coming. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, nobody's ha- no one's sitting here like yes, the war. No, but facts are facts. Yes, the war is coming. You just have to wait to see how it's going to manifest, if that makes sense. The US will fall, is falling. That's just a fact of nature, okay? So this time period has to end and this age of existence has to shift into a new one and that's literally what's happening. So everything is connected. The conflict, I can remember 10, 15 years ago, Baba Yanun making clear that yes, this conflict is present and our main goal should be to build ourselves and stay out of their way because they will destroy each other. He said ages ago that when you look at the Arabs, they're going to rise up against the Caucasians and strike them down. A while ago, he said that. He said ages ago, the bear and the the dragon are going to turn on the eagle and strike them down. So when you look at all the the prophecies to this nature, you understand that this this is all inevitable and there's nothing that can be done to stop it. It's just how long you might delay it for a year. You might delay this. You might change the way that this happens, but it's going to happen anyway. And so we're, what we're watching in the planet, on the planet, is is just the different happenings. And it's interesting to see it because all across the world, is, as you mentioned, there's different elements to these battles and different yeah, decisions. Yeah, in, in ways it's already begun, hasn't yeah, it? exactly. But it's important to acknowledge and accept because obviously no one wants to live through war. No but one's trying to do that. <laughs> war has already begun. Yeah, it's begun. So we have to act accordingly yeah we do get ourselves out the way (laughs) yeah we do and we have to remember that when we talk about living through war often from in a western perspective um especially those of the younger generation we speak about oh we would never want to do that and it would be horrible yes of course we don't want to do that but there's some people on the planet who've been living through war their entire entire lives. lives that's all they know that's literally their conditions and so we must remember that and try and look at the planet on a whole in a whole context and we always said, I think I said in Fall of the West, do your research and, and, and search up global conflicts right now. And you realize we're not really in times of peace. Mm. And I'm not sure when we were. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense. And so... Um, <laughs> yeah, been peace for at least 6,000 years. Yeah. <laughs> since, <laughs> since a certain being arrived on the planet. Since Adam and Eve. <laughs> so, um, and so you have to remember that. Um, but yes, in terms of the world war, yeah, this, this nature of this age. World War One and World War Two. there wasn't that long be- between them, right? 
Yeah, yeah, it was like, what, 30 years? 30, 30, 30, 20, yeah. 30 years. 20, 30 years. And when you think about it, they weren't that long ago. Exactly, and they weren't that long ago, and that's just the nature. And so this has been nothing but an age of death. Even after the the war finished, you had the the uh, the flu, the Spanish flu, and then the, the plagues and everything. This has been an age of death mm-hmm. and despair. And so... You, you come to understand that this age has to come to an end, but upon its climax, we're going to see the ultimate war or battle, which is why I spoke about us attuning ourselves to our right frequency so that when the time comes, if necessary, our overseers can see us and see who we are. And if we need to be taken up, taken away, moved, so that they can do what they do, destroy the planet for its rebirth, then so be it. But that's not going to happen if we're not attuned to the correct frequency. And so there's different doctrines that line up that we have to talk about. That's why I speak about different things all in one. And that's one one second I'm speaking about Israel and Palestine. And the next second I'm speaking about extraterrestrials. And the next second I'm speaking about our overseers. Because all of these are intertwined. And everything that we see right now is just a sign of the times. We, we, we keep saying it. Say it again. We're in the end times. We're right there in it. So nothing we see should be a surprise in that sense. And... And the war, yeah, the war is inevitable. And and in some ways has already begun. It's just what you, at what point do you consider it to have begun? If it's inevitable, that really means it's happening as we speak. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. absolutely. Um, important to emphasize it's the end of a world, though, not the end of the world. <laughs> yes, very important to emphasize that. Their age, their world is coming to an end. And as is nature, from those ashes, another world will rise. And that world should be our world because it's our time. And um, yeah, we just got to, as we always say, we just got to make sure we take it. We just got to make sure we take it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. But yeah, um, I think we've covered some good basis. Mm-hmm. It's just always very interesting to hear. I find this stuff very interesting. Um guess a good reference you were you were telling me leviathan part two wasn't it yeah leviathan part two the beast and the antichrist part oh, two or it's four the blue one isn't it yes that's yeah. the blue one if we got it we could throw it up on the screen um yeah it's a good book for the uh israel palestine history history so to speak and a little little context added to the uh to the uh to the nature of the conflict conflict so yeah i definitely recommend reading that but that, and that book's a thick book so there's a lot in there but just for that particular thing, you can also go there. Page. So yeah. it might be six, six fifty ish. Because it's a thick book. So if they yeah, pick up the bit... book, they're gonna be like, well, I just want to read about that. If you want to find that. <laughs> yeah, I it's think good it's, to give the yeah, page. Six fifty ish. Six fifty. Well, both those books, uh, both the Leviathan part one and part two, are very pertinent to what's going on in yes, the world right now. Literally. So yeah, they were very prophetic in, in that sense. Yes, literally, which is why you should read the whole book because a lot of it speaks about what time we're in right now. So yeah, um, very interesting books in the old school, of course, but very very pertinent books. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very pertinent. So yeah, I think we'll leave that there for mm-hmm. today. Oh, just a, a little quick one to add in in the spirit of uh, African countries telling the US to bounce. I'm just seeing recently Chad, uh, I in US like, what are you all doing here? You you, you all need to go as well. Yeah. You need to go from here as well. That's interesting. So yeah, search that out, Chad. Uh, they're like, give us a reason why you're here. If not, then bounce. Mm. <laughs> US also scratching their head. A, a reason? Ah, a reason that actually benefits you guys Let me, let's pick one up <laughs> let's uh <laughs> spring that up mm-hmm. let's see if they see if, let's see if they manage it yeah likely yes. about to get shouted at again probably mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, in congress so yeah <laughs> it's a stressful times yeah indeed <laughs> the u.s and the british they'd they, they be so many places they put their stuff in so many places people forget oh wait you guys are still here aren't yeah. you? <laughs> facts why for no reason <laughs> Other than their power. Probably they saw Niger kick out the US and were like, now we think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Some Americans here too. <laughs> yeah, they need to go. But that's what they did. The US and the British. Yeah, yeah it's just too much everywhere. British Empire. Just relax. Just it stop it. madness. Just madness. And so, yeah, it caused so many problems. Problems that other countries are having to deal with till this day. We talk about places like Congo. countries have been destabilized to such an extreme point that even to this point 
um, to this day and time, they haven't recovered, even close to recovered. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's it's been it's been bad. It's been evil beyond belief when you really study what's happened. So yeah, you need to get African countries. Yeah, these Western, if they're in your country, yeah, you should be looking at it like out you go, out mm-hmm. you go, and now's the time to do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, it was a good one. Mm-hmm. Good one. Well, it's, it's it's always interesting to learn. Hope it was helpful to people. Mm-hmm. Like to thank you all for listening. If you haven't subscribed already, now would be the time. Now is the time. Click. It's just a click of a button and the notification bell, so you're notified of when we upload next, which Two is weekly. Then. Yeah, just, yeah, just a couple clicks. Subscribe, mm-hmm. notification, easy. <laughs> easy. Subscribe. Mm. <laughs> it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Follow us also on podcast audio platforms if you like audio listening. And we will be back next week. Yes, we will. But until then, farewell. Wadu. Farewell and wadu. Farewell, wadu. I like that. You see the three voices at the end. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Triad. (laughs) Holy Trinity. (laughs) 